Hello and welcome to Three-Legged Dog Yoga. If you are new here, I am Lindsay. I will be your teacher for today's class. Today I have for you a beginner's class, no props necessary. So if you have no experience, you don't have any experience with yoga, then this class is for you. Um, you don't need any props, so if you don't have any, don't worry. And if you don't know anything about yoga, hopefully this will guide you so you have the very basic knowledge. Um, that all being said, if you do enjoy these videos, please let me know, comment, like, subscribe, all three helps channels like mine grow and it also helps build a community where I can bring more of what you want. That all being said, let's get to it. So we'll begin today in easy pose. So whatever that looks like for you, cross-legged, one leg in front, whatever your version of an easy pose is, typically speaking, it just means cross-legged. So we'll start here and we'll just bring our hands to our knees. We'll roll the shoulders up and back and we'll lift the crown of the head, the very top of the head here. We'll lift it up, chin stays gently tucked. And let's softly close the eyes. And we'll just take a moment here to move inwards to the breath. Just taking a moment to recognize the natural rise and fall of the breath. So as we breathe, how the chest fills up with air and then deflates on the exhales. And in yoga, we have something called ujjayi breathing, which is essentially just making almost like a sea, a sea noise, like a waves crashing noise at the back of the throat. So it's almost as though you're fogging up a mirror, but you're not opening the mouth. And it sounds something like this. I want you to take a moment, maybe place a hand in front of your mouth, pretend it's a mirror, and with your lips closed, try to fog it up. And gently feel that noise, the air passing down the back of the throat. And just practice that a few times. And one thing breathwork does, in addition to the movement, is it brings us inwards. It brings our focus to nothing else other than the breath and the movement. And it helps us find our version of peace. So let's softly open the eyes. We'll start today by inhaling the arms up overhead. And then as we exhale, twist the body to the right side and then just let the hands fall where they may. Coming into just a very gentle twist to the right side. So we're gonna roll that right shoulder up and back, opening just a little bit to the right side. Not forcing it, we're not going too far in. It's our very first posture, so go easy on yourself. And staying with that ujjayi breathing. Next inhale, let's raise the arms back up, come to center, and then exhale, drop the hands opposite side. This time roll that left shoulder up and back and relax into the posture. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Drop the hands beside you. Place the right hand, palm down to the out outer side of the right hip. Inhale that left arm up, and we'll just lean over to that right side. You don't have to go very far. As we lean here, we wanna try and keep that left hip glued to the floor, so we're not lifting all the way over and sort of falling to our right side. We're keeping a nice, strong core a nice strong foundation here. And just keeping that right hand as our guide. So the right, right hand sort of gently pushes away as we lift the ribs up towards the sky. And then we inhale, switch sides. So let's cartwheel that left hand, find 
the right arm up in the sky, and then exhale over to our left side. So again here, that right hip plants down to the floor, roll that shoulder up and back, and the ribs, the top of the ribs, they lifted up towards the ceiling. And take a few breaths here. Maybe just finding a nice spot to focus. And then inhale, come all the way back over. Let's flip onto our hands and knees. So coming into what's called a tabletop. So our wrists, our shoulders are over our wrists, our hips are over our knees, and our toes are tucked. So this is our tabletop position, so it's sort of our jumping off point for our cat-cow. And you will see cat-cow in a ton, I want to say everyone, but not everyone, but so many uh, yoga classes. It is a very good one to warm up the spine. So for cat-cow, on the inhale we start arching the lower back and pressing the chest out as we look up. All on the inhale. And then on the exhale, we start from the lower spine and we do the opposite, so we round it out. So one is supposed to be a cat, I assume this one, and the other one's supposed to be a cow. A cow mooing and I guess a scaredy cat meowing. And so we work with the breath. So on the exhale, we round it all out. Inhale, start with the lower back, work all the way through the chest. Look up and then exhale, round it all out. Two, two more like that. Nice and slowly, try to feel the movement all through that spine. Exhale, round. And last one, inhale, arch the back. And exhale, round. Coming back to tabletop, let's untuck the toes. We'll widen the knees out to the outer edge of the mat. Toes come to touch, and then we'll just sink back. Sink the hips over the heels for child's pose. So staying here, if this is enough for you, or you can bring the chest down and maybe the forehead down to the mat. If this is a little too intense, you can always cross the arms, make a little pillow for the forehead. Whatever feels good for the body. You can also always stay up on forearms, or if we were using props, you could use props under the sit bones. But for today's practice, let's just maybe make a little pillow on our, ha on our hands. So just sinking the hips down. And child's pose is known as a resting pose, so if you're ever tired during any class, you can always just come down to child's pose. And there are a few different versions of this, but we'll stay in this one for now. But you can always come down to child's pose and just catch your breath before coming back into the practice. A lot of classes you will hear things like, child's pose is always there if you get tired, and this is what they mean. Let's extend our hands forward. We'll press through the hands. So we're gripping with the fingertips, pressing through the hands. Send the hips up. And then we'll bring our knees back to touch. Tuck the toes, and we're going to send the hips back up for downward facing dog. But before we do that, I want you to take a moment to just pay attention to your pelvic bone and see where it is. So we want a nice, a nice strong core here. So we don't want to be arching through our back too much. And alternatively, we don't want to be rounding through our back too much as we come up through our downward facing dog. So as we do that, we'll send the hips up to the sky. Try to keep that belly glued to the legs. And then eventually you'll start straightening the legs out one by one. And we call this pedaling the feet. So just sending the heels to the floor one by one. And then we find some stillness here. So keep your knees, nice generous bend in the knees. Don't worry about your heels touching the mat. And then we wanna check in with our hands. We're gonna grip our fingers into the mat and the palm of the hand just gently comes off of the mat. So we're not dumping into our wrists here. We wanna keep the wrists nice and safe, bringing a nice grip. 
And now this is sort of the baseline. If you need to widen your stance at all, because it feels more comfortable, you're welcome to do so. Keep in mind that everybody, everybody's body is different in yoga, so everyone will have a slightly different expression. So let's inhale and bring the gaze between our hands. We'll step the right foot up. Just take a pause here. Spin on that back foot. So the back foot is about 45 degrees. And we're coming into warrior one. Take a moment on the inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, sink into those hips. So for today's practice, let's just keep our hands at heart center. So maybe the thumbs touch the chest so you can feel that breathing, that ujjayi breathing. And so in warrior one here, our back foot is 45 degrees, front foot is facing the front of the mat, parallel with the long edge of the mat, and the front knee is tracking over the front ankle. Hips are facing forward. So both as if you had two little lights on your hips, two little headlights, they're facing forward as if you're in a car. And if it feels a little weird or you can't get quite there, just open that right foot a little bit wider and you'll have more room to shuffle those hips forward. And then our hands come to heart center, working with our Ujjayi breath. And then we'll just bring our hands back down, step it back to downward facing dog. Awesome. So check in with that pelvic bone one more time. And then inhale, let's take a big step up with that left foot, pivot on the right, and come into our warrior one on the opposite side. So working a bit more into this, keeping that right foot 45 degrees, hips are square, front knee is tracking over that front heel, and our shoulders are facing forward. Take a few breaths here. Nice focus. And then we exhale. Let's plant the hands to the outer edge of the foot. Step it back. And we'll just drop the knees down. This time, let's keep them close. We'll come into the other version of child's pose where the knees are touching. So resting the forehead down. You can bring the arms beside you, palms facing up. I'm just taking a few breaths here. If you ever lose the rhythm of the breath in your yoga class, just take a pause and just come right back to it. The more you move, the more you have to focus on the breath and the more that brings the inner focus. Let's walk the hands back forward. Wait for the inhale. And then we'll send the hips back up for downward facing dog. All right, let's get ready for warrior two. So warrior two, we're gonna pivot on that back foot, take a big step up with the right foot, but this time the back foot is facing the short edge of the mat and our front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. So if you have a nice mat like mine that has lines on it, <laughs> makes it easier. Absolutely not necessary, um, but it does have the line. So if you can see that through the video, you can sort of see visually what I mean. Let's bend through that right knee. Right knee stays tracking over the left. And this time our hips are open. So they're not facing forward like we were in warrior one. So with this stance, there's the knife edge of the foot. We call it the outer edge of the foot. We press through that, we lift through our inner quads, sorry, our inner thighs, and we press through our quads. As we do so, let's raise our arms, reach the fingertips to opposite edges, roll the shoulders up and back, so we're standing nice and tall, and then the belly stays lifted. So lots going on here in this warrior two. Big deep breath. And this is where we say focus your, focus your drishti point. So your drishti point is your point of focus. So you focus over that front middle finger. And just gaze there as if you're focusing a laser. And then we'll inhale, straighten that leg. 
Take a breath and take a pause. Awesome, let's shuffle that back leg in just a little bit and we'll come into triangle pose. So this is a nice similar-ish stance to warrior two. So we're in the same, same foot configuration. So our heel is still coming towards the middle of the back foot. Our arms stay out side, beside us to either side and then we reach forward with our front arm. So this might be enough for you today. That's totally fine. If not, you can drop that right hand either to the thigh or to the shin. If you're more flexible, you're welcome to go a bit further down. But for today's practice, let's just keep it nice and light. And so as we do so, we reach that left arm up towards the sky. And one thing we wanna do here in triangle is try to keep that whole body as if we were in two panes of glass or I like to say if we were in the trash compactor in Star Wars, we want to keep our bodies nice and flat. Even though they didn't eventually get squished in Star Wars, you get my point. And we'll stay here. So that left shoulder is rolling up and over, shoulders are stacked. And then we'll just inhale, come back up to center, exhale, release the arms down, give them a little shake, shake out the legs, and we'll switch sides. So we're just going to switch sides by pivoting the feet. So let's pivot the right foot in and the left foot comes out. Warrior two stance is usually a little bit wider. Um, however, again, it's individualistic. So if you have longer legs, it might be a little bit different than if you have shorter legs. So we'll start here, left knee is tracking over that left ankle. The left foot is in line with the arch of the right foot. Inhale, arms come outside and exhale, sink into the hips. So once again, the core is still lifted, our shoulders are rolled up and back, and we're reaching out to the outer edges of the mat with those fingers. Finding the gaze over that front middle finger, and always reaching the crown of the head, so the top of the head, reaching it up. So that spine is staying nice and long. We love long spines, tall spines in yoga. And then as we inhale, straighten that front leg. You might need to heel toe that back foot in just a little bit. And then as we exhale, we reach forward with that left hand and drop it down. If you're placing your hand on your leg, try not to place it on a joint, either above or below. And then we inhale that right arm up overhead. Again, keeping the body in those two panes of glass. We're not letting that right shoulder roll forward. As we come into this, we're keeping a nice open chest and then we come down. Doing a little micro bend in this front knee we want to always try to avoid locking our joints. Just keep them safe and it also keeps our legs working a bit harder that way. And then inhale, come back up to center. Let's pivot on the feet and we'll bring our hands to our hips. Take a big breath in and then exhale, sigh it out. Awesome. Let's come in to a wide leg forward fold. So our feet this time are parallel to one another. Typically speaking, if you keep your feet a little bit wider, it makes this a bit easier. And as you progress in your practice, you can sort of make your stance closer and closer and that'll allow you to get a bit deeper into it. So for this one, find what feels good for your feet. Again, we have the knife edge of the foot, so the outer edge of the foot really pressing into that mat. Our legs are helping lift us and then our hands come to our hips. Shoulders roll up and back. Big breath in and then exhale, send the hips back, coming in to our forward fold. So staying here, you don't need to go too far into this. And I'm just going to show you this from the side because we want to keep a nice flat back here. We don't want to be rounding into this because that doesn't really do much for us. So we want to keep a nice flat back. So keeping the hands on the hips, that nice flat back, little bend in the knees if it, this feels a little too intense. Always, you can always bend the knees. And then inhale, start by rolling the shoulders up, draw that chest up, come all the way to standing. <sighs> awesome. And we'll just take a step to the top of our mat and we'll just come down just by sitting down. Nothing fancy. We don't need to do anything fancy today as we're just starting out. Awesome. <clears throat> so let's start by sitting up nice and tall and then we'll just roll 
the spine down, one vertebrae at a time. Nice and slowly until we get all the way down to the mat. And we're going to come into something that's called bridge here. So this is a nice little back bend. So one thing we wanna do in bridge is we wanna keep the back of our necks, there's a little, the nape of our neck, there's a little bone there, we wanna keep that off of the mat. So we'll start by keeping our feet planted, knees bent, and we'll see if we can touch the heels. If you can't touch the heels, not a big deal, but that's ideally, that's the idea of where we wanna go. So we start here. And then slowly we just roll onto the shoulders one by one. So we're taking the back of the neck off of the mat. Keep the back of the neck safe in this, that's the most important thing. And then as we inhale, we send those hips up to the sky doesn't matter how high they go. And we stay here. Check in and see if those knees are falling out wide. If they are, squeeze them back together. So we're really squeezing through the groin muscles, keeping the knees square and sending those hips up towards the sky. Checking in with that nape, making sure that it's off the back of the mat and breathing here. The breath should still be full. If you can't breathe here, then just come out of it a little bit and find where you can really fill the lungs. And then as we work and as we gain strength through our core and through our backs, then we can start adding on. And as we exhale, let's just come off the shoulders and then we just relax down one by one. And so we're gonna come into that one more time. We'll just take one moment here. Just take a break, take a, break, take a breath. So let's inhale, roll onto the shoulders, get off the back of that neck there. And then we press those hips up towards the sky. This time you can maybe try pressing them up a little bit higher. Palms of the hands can face down, hands can interlace behind the back, or you can also give, yourself, give yourselves a little push of the hips. Whatever feels good, whatever feels right in the body, keep those knees square. And then as we exhale, let's just slowly come down one vertebrae at a time. All the way down. <sighs> awesome. So let's reach our hands out beside us. If you don't have enough space beside you, you can always make your hands kind of like a football, football goal. <laughs> yeah, a field goal, like one of those. And we call this cactusing your arms. So depending on how much space you have, you can either bring your arms out nice and wide or cactus them. And then let's come into a twist. So we're going to start by shuffling our hips over to the left side, and then we're going to drop the knees over to the right. So for today's practice, let's just drop the knees, nothing too fancy. There are several different ways you can come into the twist, but let's just leave it here for now. And what we want to do here is we want to draw that left hip away from that left shoulder, but all the while keeping that left shoulder glued to the mat. So if you can feel that left shoulder coming off, just lift the legs up a little bit. Maybe kickstand the legs with the right arm, wherever you are uh, today in your practice. Again, this will base, this will uh, have to do with flexibility, but as you practice more, you'll get more used to it and you can get a bit deeper into stuff. So no worries about where you go today. It's maybe your very first day. And we stay here. Wherever we are, we wanna make sure that left shoulder is glued to the floor. And then we inhale, let's bring the knees back up, the arms back to center, shuffle the hips back to center, take a breath. And we will switch sides. So let's shuffle the knees, the hips, sorry, over to the right side this time, and then let the knees fall to the left. So again, if you feel that right shoulder lifting, let's just kickstand those knees back up and stay here, wherever you are. There's always an option to bring the gaze over that right shoulder. We didn't do this on the opposite side, but there is always an option to do that. It's what we sometimes call adding on, but sometimes it just is easy to do. But some things will come very naturally and others not so much. So just find, find what feels good for you. And we'll inhale, come back up to center, shift the hips back to neutral. <sighs> and we'll bring the knees in, hug them in. So we're gonna inhale, draw those knees to the chest, 
head and neck come up, making a little ball. We're gonna give ourselves a nice big hug. And just stay here, one nice big breath. And then we'll find the hands to the back of the thighs and we'll just start rocking our way up to seated. it. <sighs> awesome. Coming back up to seated, let's come back into our easy pose, but we're going to switch whatever leg was in behind. We're going to put that in front as to balance out the body. <sighs> Hands come back to the knees, roll the shoulders up and back, and sit up nice and tall. Let's close the eyes one more time. Let's release any controlled breathing, any ujjayi breathing we are practicing. And we'll finish today's practice with one cleansing breath. So exhale all the air out. Big inhale. Exhale, sigh it out. Softly opening the eyes. Thank you so much for joining us. That is all for today's practice. And we'll see you next time. Again, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please do let us know in the comments. Thanks, and we'll see you again.